Hello there, this is Chatterbox, and welcome to a video where I discuss how I made my game Sword Swap for the Danny Game Jam. So um, let's get into it, I'm just going to sort of start. Um, this is my reaction to the theme, I was in the Discord voice chat when it happened, so here you go. What's I had no plan. Yeah, I'm not, I didn't really I expect it. Um, you are what you consume. Yeah. Right, okay. That's interesting. I think I've got an idea. You're lucky, because I've got nothing so far. Uh, I, I don't want to make a 2D game, because I spent ages making a load of shaders last night for 3D. But, like, th th this, I do have a good idea. Today, I've successfully finished zero games, so if I succeed, this will be my first. Oh, good luck, man. Yeah, thanks. Right then, I'm gonna probably head off and go. Good luck with that. Drink some milk, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> Definitely. So I uh, said I didn't want to make a 2D game. Uh, I guess what happened? I made a 2D game. My idea for the jam was that you play as a weapon fighting other weapons. And essentially what you've got to do is when you kill the other weapon, you take on all its properties in which you become what you consume so that fits with the theme of the jam um so i was going to originally do it in 3d because i paid a load of assets for it beforehand which you're allowed to do um but i realized i didn't have the time to make a load of swords or whatever and i'd found a great public domain asset pack beforehand which was going to be quite useful for a uh, 2d it contained a load of weapons so i decided to go with a 2d game instead so I imported all my sprites and made basic movement and a spinny attack because that's how I wanted to attack. Next was a turn to make some basic enemies and so I created some pathfinding for them. So that's actually all I did on day one but it was a pretty solid foundation and that takes us on to day two. After that I decided I wanted to make some procedural levels so everything was going quite well. Unfortunately, my maths was kind of off and the levels didn't always generate properly, so I decided to scrap that and maybe try something else. But then I had an absolute stroke of genius. Since 2D is one less planes of reality than 3D, it's actually a lot easier to generate levels for them. And my idea was Perlin Noise. This is a simple 2D algorithm that generates a smooth um, sort of noise pattern. And what I decided to do was try and make some levels from that. So a quick Wikipedia search later, I had a little Perlin Noise script. And what I could do is I could get that and I could round the cells to either be a cell or not. This on top of the basic room system that I'd already created made some really cool levels. Unfortunately, I had some problems with this too. The unpredictability of the random algorithm I was using meant that sometimes the player would get stuck in some rooms and they couldn't actually complete the level. So what I had to do was think of a way around this. Fortunately, I was actually saved by a bug where I was trying to do some basic caching and optimization, but I accidentally made it so whenever a player walks into a tile, it destroys it. So I just decided not to fix it and instead to embrace it as part of my game. I sort of patched it in, in the form of when the player was attacking, it would destroy the object that they touched. And um, that sort of solved my problem and also made it quite cool. So here's a little bit of footage of that. It just does damage to the block based on the weapon's damage, and then if the health of the block reaches zero, it deletes it. Now then, I say the uh, weapon's damage because I actually wrote a system that meant I could add in a load of weapons. I ended up adding in, I think, 23 weapons to the game. And essentially what I did was I made an object that held a load of values, such as the sprite, the sound, and the damage and the properties of the weapon. And that meant I could make a load of weapons really quickly. And so I spent about an hour adding in all 23 weapons and making it so the enemies spawn with different weapons and stuff and you could use them and access the properties and that is probably my favourite part of this um, game that I've made. Just um, ignore how bad the code is. It was originally a scriptable object, but then I decided it'd be a lot easier if I just handled all the weapon logic on one script and 
everything had this weapon script so the enemies in the player and uh that, that that's why the comments are there because um it's not incredible code it does actually throw errors every frame unless i put it in this try catch block and um it's probably not the best way of handling code um i i would probably shame myself for it in a video um but we'll just look past that and so after that i decided it was time to make the main menu it's got a play and a credits button and you might notice on the credits scene that i'm not alone for once I'm working with an awesome musician who posted on the uh, community section that he was looking for a team and so I decided that that would be awesome because I'm not very good at making music and he is so there'll be a link to him in the description. And that's all for day two, I got a surprising amount of stuff done on uh, day two and over the next few days I just added in some screen shake, some block shake, um, I added in some little bits of polish, made the spawning a bit more robust. Um, but I didn't really do too much after that. Um, I'm not sure why, I, I just didn't really know what more to do, especially when you've got a procedural game, it's kind of hard to add content without sort of changing the algorithm and I didn't want to break it. So on the fourth day, I added all my stuff to the um, store page. I didn't make it public yet because I wanted to make a few tiny tweaks, but not a thing major. So on the last day, after a load of polish, um, just fixing a few bugs with WebGL, I submitted my game to the jam, and now making this video. So I hope you enjoyed the video, just sort of seeing how I made this. Um, thank you for watching, by the way. 